So today I am going to be talking about my beautiful, wonderful, amazing, familiar, my little kitty cat named Serena. Um, I kind of had this idea from, um, well, I'm trying to think of what it was, 77, 75, witchy community tag video, and it asked like, uh, you know, how did you guys meet? And I was like, yeah, that'd be a great story. And that'd also be a great way to kind of, you know, um, do a, how do you know if your pet is a familiar, you know, type of thing? Um, what are the signs? What are some things to mention and to see, you know? Um, how do you know if your pet has crossed over into familiar territory, you know? Um, so anyway, I think that the first, first tail sign of how you know if your pet is a familiar is the way you guys meet, you know? Um, a lot of us, I think, have that instant connection, instant knowing of like, yes, you are coming home with me. And I'm not talking about like that second, because I don't think, I mean, some sure people know, but you know, spending like a, maybe a couple minutes and, you know, kind of saying like, hey, you know, I kind of like you and hey, you know, I don't know about you, but there's something I like and, you know, kind of having that instant love at first sight. Just that, you know, connection within the first few minutes, I think is really, really a big indicator. Um, I've had so many pets, I really have, and it's usually been like, oh, you know, here, I have a dog, do you want her? Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Or, you know, hey, I'm having kittens or puppies, and do you want one? Oh, okay, yeah, this one's cute, he's, he's brown or black or, you know, spots or whatever. Okay, yeah, I'll take them. You know, not necessarily getting to know or having the, um, any idea of what the personality is like before you kind of just choose. Um, so, you know, having that, which I did have with um, my familiar Serena, um, was a big indicator. So, um, just to quickly tell you guys the story, um, I got her last May. And um, it was really rough beforehand. I just had lost um, my prior cat who I did love, but who was a little bit of a demon problem child. And so it took me a little bit to get over her. And, um, and I thought, you know, when last May came around that I think I was finally ready. Um, but I did have some interesting ideas of what I wanted next. Um, so, so I said, okay, I would like to get them from the, the pound or the SPCA. Sorry, hold on, my phone's ringing. Um, so I would like to get her from the pound. And, um, since my last cat was a boy, um, it was a girl, I really wanted to get a boy. And, you know, black, car black cats are, um, my heart and my soul. I love them so much. So I would love to get, like, a fluffy one, like a long-haired one. Um, so I kind of had this kind of, um, preconceived, um, idea of what I wanted my next cat to be. And so, um, that weekend, uh, it was like going to be a full moon or was, it was a full moon. And so I'm like, you know, perfect timing. So I went there and, um, they had, they're separated, like basically cats in the front in this like room and you went down this hallway and other little rooms were in the cats and then the back were all the dogs and all the dog rooms. Um, so we were like, okay, we had this idea of wanting to get a cat and so let's just kind of mosey on into the rooms. And so I kind of walked down the hallway, I kind of looked into the, um, the rooms cause they were like mostly glass and, um, I went all the way down the hallway and to the door on my left, there she was just perfectly sitting there contently. Um, she was like on top of a bookcase or some kind of counter, I'm trying to think of like a wire kind of thing. Um, and she was just laying down, just like perfectly hanging out. And so here we come, my partner and I, and um, I'm like, oh my God, she's beautiful because she definitely is. She's black and brown torty and she's just gorgeous. And so we pet her and I'm a little nervous, you know, and so she starts purring 
immediately and she's just turning on her side and she's just giving me these looks like you know you want to adopt me because I'm so precious and I love you already and so we really did have this instant like the first cat I saw I did not think I'd fall in love with her but I absolutely did and so they had like pictures and a little bio on the outside of the door of all the cats that are in that room and so we looked at it and we noticed that it said she had um you know potty problems so my partner was not convinced so he wanted to go look at other cats and so i was like okay that's fine you know you can't necessarily make the first choice even though i wanted to um so, so we walked into the other rooms and i actually did find a long-haired black male cat but he wanted nothing to do with me. He, I tried petting him a little bit and he was very standoffish and he was like, fuck you, get out of here, I'm sleeping. And so I was like, okay, obviously not the cat for me. Um, my partner actually ended up falling for this little cute orange tabby cat, but I'm sorry. My mind was already hooked on Serena and that I wanted her. And so of course, I always get my way so I did and you know it was just perfect like I love the fact that you know I just went straight down the hallway straight into her room she was the first cat I saw and it was just magic it was just you know that connection and that you know spirit guided me that way into the perfect um cat and my perfect familiar and I think a lot of us that do have familiars have similar story not exactly like that but just having that instant connection kind of just knowing like it was meant to be knowing that you went there to find them or that they came to find you you know however you guys you however you guys met it was just pretty much meant to be um so it's just i think that's just one of the signs and it's just one of the most beautiful signs really um, so anyway, um, I think another sign that your pet is more than just a pet and they are familiar is they have this really interesting understanding and, and trust and like your personalities just kind of click. Um, I've had other pets where, um, they have just kind of like, you know, I've said something and they just kind of look at me like. Are you fucking kidding me? Or like, you know, with dogs, how they really learn commandments, like, you know, or commands. Um, where, um, you know, you do like a shake or a sit or whatever. And, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like this really interesting understanding. Like, um, Serena, the other day, it's been pretty cool out. So I've been leaving the door open and to the, to the patio leaving the door onto the patio. Um, so she's safe, she can't go nowhere. <laughs> um, so I went into the kitchen for something, I think to cook dinner or whatever. And I told her, you know, I looked at her in, right in the eye and I'm like, okay, you can only go around the door so I can see you. Like after a certain point, there's like a window or like a little half window wall, whatever, where I can't see past that point. So she did, exactly that like she understood that like if I was talking to you know a person or at least a child uh, you know trying to say that, tell that to like my other dog or whatever like no he never would have gone he's like I don't know what you're saying I don't speak human you know versus like Serena really does um, so we just kind of have that connection that we understand and like if it's time to go to bed like she knows hey you know it's not really time to go to bed like what are you doing up or um, or like if I tell her, you know, going to bed early or something and she just knows, like I don't have to even say anything. She just kind of follows me in there or if I'm already in there, um, she knows the time is time to go to bed. Like she just has this underlying understanding and we just kind of connect in that way. Like it's so interesting, but it is. And I now I know it sounds a little crazy the way it's coming out because uh, I'm not like a Dr. Doolittle or anything like that um but which it really does sound crazy but like she gets it and I know it's kind of unless if you understand like you know like that's one of the things that like, you can really tell the difference between a pet 
kind of familiar because they really do just kind of get it, um, which is really amazing. Um, I would say um, probably the biggest, biggest sign that you know your um, pet is really familiar is them being in your um, spiritual area, be wanting to be part of your spiritual witchy life and um, things that you do, you know, if you're meditating or doing yoga, I mean, oh my God, I cannot, my love, my cat loves to be around me when I'm doing yoga, um, or ritual, or um, witchcraft, or anything, anything that you're doing, any kind of workings you're doing, um, they love to be a part of it. And I know Serena's definitely not um, an exception to that rule. Uh, sometimes, especially when doing yoga, it can kind of get a little annoying. Um, but if I'm just in my spiritual room making a video, like usually that's why I can never use the first take because she's always in it. Um, if I'm just writing things down, she's there. If I'm doing, I mean, she just loves, loves, loves to be in my witchy room and witchy space. Or sometimes I'll come home from either work or from running errands and she'll like walk out of the witchy room like, oh. Welcome home. Like, uh, okay, even though my bedroom's on the other side of the house, uh, which she usually, most of the time, is coming from there. Um, or, like, she usually um, hides away from, like, the vacuum in the bedroom closet. But, like, recently she's been going in my witch room and finding, like, you know, <laughs> um, sanctuary in there. Um, so, so she loves it. She really does. And, you know, I think that's a big thing. I think a lot of people talk about um, your familiars are teachers. Um, they're there to teach you something specific or I don't know, just a lot of teaching. And I don't think for me in my specific case, Serena's there to teach me things. I think she's there to be my partner, to share things, to be there to support me and to kind of just have that bond of just being there for me. Um, and I think every familiar relationship is, is different, of course, nothing's the same, but, um, but I think a lot of people, like, kind of focus in on, you know, they're there to teach you something, and not necessarily, like, I mean, unless if I'm sure there's something that Serena hasn't taught me yet or anything, but, um, but I think she's mostly there for support and just to, to keep me company and just to be there because that means like a lot that means the world to me it really does and and I wouldn't have it any other way so um, I would love to hear your familiar stories um, if you have any kind of comments or questions about you know well I think you know my pet might be my familiar I'm just not sure well tell me about it you know maybe I can help you out or anything like that or if not if you watch the video and this is blank yes 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 then, um, yeah, your pet is your familiar, totally. So, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!